Pink Fizz, Think England. Today we have five award-winning English sparkling wines to taste. And we've got a wonderful lineup today. We really do have five different wineries. As Oliver said, all award-winning sparkling wines. But what we want to really do here is to see how good is English sparkling wine. Obviously, when it comes to England, we've got things like fish and chips, we've got tea, James Bond, I've written these things down, double-decker buses, Buckingham Palace, the Beatles, and wine. And we seem to have a question mark on it, don't we, wine. But in fact, not many people realise that English wine, especially sparkling wine, over the last few years has really made a big impact globally, not only in the UK, but globally. Their kind of rise to fame has been quite rapid, and the wines are actually enjoying wonderful medals from across the, across the world and acclaim, great article, great tasting notes. And today we've got just literally a selection of five English sparkling wines to taste through and ideally share those qualities with you. So I thought first of all we would try the Bidenden. So Bidenden here which won itself a silver medal at 2021 Glass Club Awards in the category of Spring and Fling. Now to give you an idea, like when you go into the supermarkets, a bottle of champagne may be on promotion, say at Sainsbury's or Tesco's, maybe at £20, a brand that you may recognise, £20, £25. Sometimes you go into Aldi and Lidl and they'll have a lesser known brand down to £10, £11, £12. English sparkling wine kind of costs a little bit more, should we say. You wouldn't usually find them on promotion as such, but what they do is they do compare fairly well with champagnes. And some of these prices here, for instance, this Bidendon here, the Brut Bidendon, the actual name of this label is the Gribble Bridge 2016, so vintage, is only £24.80 a bottle, if you go directly by the website. So again, that's on the same part as, as a champagne, but because it's own grown, made in the same way as how they do in, in champagne, maybe it's worth that kind of price to pay. But let's see, to so start off with the Bidendon Brut. Really good on the nose, isn't it? Yeah, very good. Very welcoming fruity, yellow fruits, green fruits, sweetness on the nose. Yeah, it's right and natural. It feels like you're at the, you're picking them. Rather than at the supermarket, you're out there with picking the fruits. fruits. Picking the fruits. Picking, so harvest time. I was kind of, Stop trying to say here, harvest time, I yes. think, isn't it? Yeah, so picking those fruits off and biting into it, natural flavours, definitely. Flavours are a little bit different to the, the, the aroma, a touch more zesty, kind of sharper, good levels of acidity, but certainly that fruity character continues. Would you say it tastes like a champagne? Not so, no, very different. But we must remember this is a, a 60 year old now kind of wine, but made in the same way as we say of champagne. But we've got a slightly different terroir here in the UK, in England. We've got maybe the temperatures are aging to what they were once in the Champagne region, but certainly different areas of the UK in England have different kind of soil types and weather patterns. But for me, really good on those, fruity, it's telling you this is young, fresh, vibrant flavours, a lovely burst of citrus, good levels of acidity. Yeah. Any extras on the flavour? I think you I think you pretty much summed it up. It is a it is a good quality English sparkling wine. It is so good structure. So what they say in the back of the bottle here. So good structure with a clean finish, attractive, bready, baked notes. I didn't get that, but I'm sure they're there. Produced from selected grapes grown at Kent's original family run vineyard, okay, outside the picturesque village of Bidenden. Let's not forget that you can also visit many of these wineries. Go to their website, make a booking, visit them, do a tasting, and actually find out more about what's happening in English sparkling wine. So the property, soil and climate, coupled with modern winemaking techniques, all help to produce this classic dry and fruity wine. There we go. The dryness, but the fruitiness coming through splendidly there with the Bibendin Brut. So the next one. I need mm -hmm. a proper uh, kind of um, beer kind of opener here because we've got a cap on this one here, as you'll see. So I know this wine here, they entered it into the Wolsey Miosham 
and they only just got the branding done. I think we actually got the bottle through without any labels on and they still have the, the, the caption on, but obviously it has been disgorged. So we're just about to taste this one. The anticipation is rising here. This is Miosham. This is a silver medal winner in the Zesty and Zingy category 2021 Glass Above Awards. This is their premier method, method Brute 2019 Vintage. And on the website, again, purchased directly, it's £29.50 a bottle. So again, on par with a relatively standard kind of bottle of, of, of champagne. Here comes Oliver with the tool that we need. We're going to give this a little pop. Here we go. And open it is. So again, this is £29.50 on the website. I know really, I can remember the rosé from this, it's just splendid rosé. Can't remember the brew, and I'm going to relive that memory now. See the star, isn't it? We've got a very fruity nose, wonderfully fruity nose. Yellow fruits, plenty of green fruits, maybe orchard fruits on the nose. Yeah, I'm getting silky fruits, yellow fruits, and I'm, I'm not orange, green. <laughs> orange, green. But yeah, plenty. I've got a touch of maybe dry kind of saline pastry for something's telling me it's more of a drier, savoury pastry on the nose. There's certainly yellow fruits, green fruits on the nose. Let's try the flavours for this meal fruit. Mm. Okay, so a real big contrast here. Plenty, what's this? Zesty and zingy. That's not surprise me. Plenty of acidity, plenty of citrus, lemon pulp. Splash of lime in there, mm -hmm. underripe kind of say apricot, even peach in there, grapefruit, all of those kind of vigorous mouth watering flavours coming through here. Makes it a wonderful kind of wine to go run alongside some kind of fatty dishes. It's really going to cleanse that palate. But very good once again. Yeah, the grapefruit flavours are really doing it for me. Grapefruit flavours. Next one we're going to do. Is ever reliable the Bowley Wine Estate? So we've got their estate, they've got their classic Cuvée, the Brut. Um, I believe this is an NV, this one here. And so the NV, which won a silver medal in the Spring Fling category. And then the example, again, go to the website, Bowley website, £32 a bottle. We are once again in that bracket of a okay kind of a champagne that you'd purchase at, at the supermarket or your local wine merchant. So we're going to give this a long vintage go, Brute. And uh, Bowley won the Sustainability Trophy this year. They did indeed, yes, that's very true, Oliver. So the Sustainability Trophy, sponsored by Slow Food UK, was won by Bowley with all of the efforts that they made to give back to nature what nature gives to them. So good point, Oliver. So we've got the NV here from Bowley. Let's give this one a go. I've still got a little drop in of the Mioshum. So once again, £32 a bottle, and most times these websites are very easy to use. You can order, phone up, email, order online as I say, and a lot of these places are also open to visitors. Certainly Bowley, Bowley got a wonderful location there, pop down to see them. They've got a restaurant upstairs, they've got a little shop that you can buy wine from, and if you book with them you can take a tour and then have a private tasting in a separate part, part of the building. This is very um, fresh and fruity. More on the, I'd say, more on the yellow fruits. This fresh and fruity, but it's like peach, grape, grapefruit. There's something in there as well. There's a touch of sweet spices on the nose. Sweet spices for me. Like a spice cake. Yeah, like a spice cake, like a fruity, maybe like peach spice cake. Something like that on the nose. Once again, a really palate cleansing expression, a wash of flavours, yellow fruits, zestiness, minerals, a touch of saline in there as well. So a tiny, tiny bit of like nettles 
uh, in grass elements too. So very much like an English country garden. You know, I've got spring fling, so you know the garden, the, the, the kind of grass is running away of it every two weeks. You're having to cut it, and nettles there. You're cutting the grass, and boom, you've got that kind of fresh, freshly cut grass nettle. Um, aromas, but here we've got them in the flavours. I also got a little bit of honeysuckle on the on the palate. Nice. I'm touch of honeysuckle there from Oliver as well, but certainly that kind of yeah, floral notes, mostly citrus, fruity flavours. Once again, very good wine, and once again, a very good wine for gastronomy. Um, now, <coughs> we're going on to Cornwall, and um, since 1989, this winery here, which is Camel Valley. Uh, this is their Rosé Brut, which is the Pinot Noir Rosé Brut, 2019, I believe, vintage. And this one itself, the trophy in the 2021 Glass of Buggy Awards in the category of Forget Me Not. So that kind of memorable, out, standout kind of flavour, aroma, wine, this one, the, 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 this ended at top of the bill for, for this category. So let's go for the Camel Valley and I'll relay the price of the bottle to you in a minute. They're very bubbly the wines. It's making me kind of burp a little bit there. So really bubbly, mm. very alive these yeah. wines are. <laughs> Boom. <coughs> there we go. So this wine here, once again, is a trophy winning wine, and it's only thirty-six pounds per bottle. So we're now kind of reaching the maybe better quality of the kind of uh, supermarket brands that you'd find uh, champagne you know, on, on, on the shelves. Also edging towards some of the OK standard grower champagne. If you know more about grower champagne, you'll know what I mean. So we're hitting that kind of bracket, top end of the standard everyday champagnes that we all recognize the names of, to also some of the smaller boutique kind of grower champagne level price, 36 pounds. Now, for me, I always say with Camel Valley Rosé, it is the best rosé English sparkling wine that I've tasted. Year on year, um, they, they deliver this quality performance and maybe it's the terroir and then the temperatures down there in Cornwall, lovely setting obviously, maybe there's something about the land or maybe it's just how good the winemaking skills are. I don't know, but I always put my hat on the table and say, this is, um, cards on the table, hat, I'm not quite sure. Let's just say cards actually, that this for me is the best English sparkling Rosé, so be interesting to see your thoughts. Yeah. <coughs> Oliver's just waiting to get involved in the wine there. It's like the soft red berries, strawberries, raspberries in the young man. I'll get a little bit of sherbet in there. It's like strawberry pink candy sherbet. Yeah, I can I can definitely smell that. But it's a it's a nice faint kind of pink, soft pink colour into the wine. It's not aggressively too dark rosé. I'm just going to pop in a bit more fizz. Wondering if the colour is similar or not. Yeah, it could be. They do have this kind of a thing with wine labels. You know what? I'll just go it again. So I would say the label colour here is maybe purposely so is nearly spot on the colour of the, of the wine in the glass. So well spotted there. Camel Valley. Let's go for the flavours. So really good, plenty of red berry fruits, got sharpness in there, coming maybe from like red, green apples, maybe even rhubarb, you know, that really sharp kind of flavour. Palate cleansing, not a displeasing sharpness, good levels of acidity, but a prominent kind of um, demonstration of red berries from, from the garden. Um, underripe, maybe raspberry, a touch of the foliage from, from the raspberry. Good quality sweet red berry fruits as well. Really nice, subtle quality one. Yeah, I think it is. There's subtle notes to it. It's, to me, it's soft, and rounded, and smooth with a mixture, a wonderful mixture of ripe red berries, just just unripe, just yeah. getting there, and then some sharp sharp um, red berries which hit the top of the tongue. It is that way. They, they delivered it perfectly well. You'd think that you've got a bowl of fruit. Most of it's ripe, some of it's on the right, you're just crunching into that and then drinking that juice. It just gives me that impression. As I say, very good wine, perfect to go with certain foods. I'd like to see this with kind of heated dishes, um, maybe something like a curry, 
Thai curry, not too, not too, too hot, but then there's a little bit of the temperature there from spices. This would work wonderfully well with. Now, last of all, we're going to go to Sussex, which is a Fox and Fox Mayfield. This is their expression label. This is a Sanye rose. It says Sanye, which is a word in French translates to be in blood. So what they're trying to say, it's a deeper rose colouring. It's had a longer connection with the, the with the um, skin of the black grapes here. So, and as I say, this is the 2014 fresh red berry flavours from our Pinot Noir, combined with light floral notes from our Pinot Gris, and a refreshing whisper of zestiness from our Chardonnay to make this elegant salmon pink rosé simply delicious. And lease aging for this bottle is 48 months. So a lot of commitment, as you say, plenty of commitment, a lot of work, a wonderful array of, of grapes in there. This bottle here is the costliest of the, uh, the five bottles, but it's £42 a bottle. But if you look at the layaway and the time and effort made to make this one, the beautiful colouring, because I have it in the clear bottle, so you can see the, the lovely colour of the, of the wine. Um, I think it's worthwhile, and you would pay this for an okay standard um, uh, champagne that's rosé, and or a good standard grower champagne, rosé grower champagne. So it's, it's it's shoulder to shoulder with, with that level, but rightly so, because this got itself a gold medal in a meditation category. This um, expression label, <laughs> boom! How lively is that? So this is the last of the five for English sparkling wine. Hopefully we've shared some nice moments with you. This is gonna be the final kind of fling. And Fox and Fox are also responsible for creating the world's finest glass of bubbly for 2021. Yes, and that's another point. Very good. I'm pleased you mentioned that because I didn't write it on my notes here. But English sparkling wine is that good that this year, or should I say last year, we're really into this year, last year, the world's finest glass probably the best overall sparkling wine and we had wine from all across the world from japan argentina south africa you name it we had a wine from the country england come on top and their their paxton and wickfield blend actually the 2015 very close to their mosaic blend won that trophy so that was a magnificent achievement for english sparkling wine we were thrilled the first time uh, an english sparkling wine had won our trophy but it was, it was very well deserved, it's a splendid wine. But here, this one here, as I say, is £42 a bottle, and it is meditation. So in English sparkling wine production, around about 75% of the wine produced in the UK is sparkling, and the rest of it is, is, is um, still wine. And there is approximately, give or take a few hectares, 4,000 hectares of, of vineyards that are planted across the country as of yet. But that number is growing all the time. The amount of wineries is growing. The amount of, um, what's the word, choice that we have continues to grow. And as does the fan base. So let's give Fox and Fox their moment here. A nice warmer colour. So compared to the rosé from, from Camel Valley, this is a good few shades darker. Good on those. Yes, definitely. I mean, a lovely expression of the red berries, mm. like strawberries and raspberries on... On a thin pastry layer. Oh yeah, like a flaky, savoury pastry layer. Maybe a touch of toast, it's a little bit burnt in, in the oven. But certainly those red berry fruits. They've got a touch of like orange blossom on the nose too. I might be getting a touch of rhubarb. Touch of rhubarb, there we go. Let's say a touch of rhubarb. Sounds like it should be the name of a horse at the, at the Grand National. A touch of rhubarb. Can you imagine putting your money on that one? I like that touch of rhubarb. Um, <clears throat> really good on those. There's a touch of soft, sweet spices too. It's really proud in a way that it's displaying what it's got up your nose, the type of thing, on the aroma. So it's really tempting. I can smell it even now. It's wafting out of this glass tremendously well, tempting me into the taste. Mm. Very subtle, very calming, but actually very similar to the aromas. So again, Sweet, soft spices, red berry fruits, a touch of orange character, orange blossom. Mm -hmm. I've got a little bit of a smokiness, which I see was the flaky pastry, burnt bits of the flaky pastry, but there's a little bit more, like a, not a bonfire, dare I say a bonfire, but it's a touch of smokiness to it too. 
Yeah, I agree. It's very similar to the to the aroma. I just think that the the pastry and the spice characters are enhanced more in the flavour. But there's a dry character. I think these are all these are all brute uh, labels, so they're all of similar kind of sugar level content. Same star wine, two rosé, three non-rosé. But this one has a, a, a very elegant dryness to it. So. It's dry in the palate, but then the, the sweet fragrance from the fruit, from the grape, starts to come through, and then it mouth waters the palate towards the close. But it's an array of flavours, and it's nothing too aggressive. It's just very calming. What is it? This was meditation. There we go. It was very calming and relaxing in the palate, all the way through from you know from the start to the to the close. So really, really good wine. Yeah. So there, there we have it. Five English sparkling wines. Do we want to go with what might be a favourite? A favourite? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I think for me it's a toss up between the Fox and Fox and the Bidendum. Bidendum, yeah, the Bidendum was a good start. Um, oh, I, I don't think you're far off there. I must say this is very impressive, the Fox and Fox, it really is. Mm -hmm. um, the overall quality of wine, it probably leads the way here, but I would say uh, if I'm out on, you know, on a kind of spring summer's day in the garden, and I had to choose a, a, a rosé, an English rosé. Obviously, the, the, the Fox and Fox is the Sennier, which is always going to be deeper, stronger character, stronger rosé character. If you're looking for a lighter rosé style, I would probably opt with the Camel Valley. It is really good, especially if you're little pick bits of food, canapes. This would work very well, but they're, they're all good, they're all splendid wines. Yes, really well. indeed. So, there we go. So, you've gone. Fox and Fox of I've gone for both. I've gone for the Camel Valley. So there we go, everybody. Thank you for watching this video, and until next time, enjoy the fizz.